All right, and we are recording. So welcome to this session of uh, just kind of an informational night for Robert Down Elementary's site council. And um, I know uh, Chelsea Huber, who's, who's with us, uh, has been on PTA. And Tally Helfont is kind of a, a pro. She's been with us before, uh, all last year. But tonight is really kind of an overview. Wanted to uh, share uh, how the minutes are taken and uh, answer any questions for parents that might be interested in site council and just give kind of an overview. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and hopefully I will do this clearly. Does everybody see that okay? Yeah, good. Okay. Yes. Great. Let me blow this up. All right, how is that? Is that large enough for everybody? Yeah? Perfect. Okay. All right. So uh, again, next week, I mean, what you'll find on our agendas is I'll always have a link for the meeting on the agenda. Did that work tonight at the top of the agenda? Yeah? Okay. I'm just hoping that there's people not, I'm just going to check my, my texts, make sure everybody's in that needs to be in. Sometimes people do text me. Okay. okay. All right. So I just want to make sure uh, everybody uh, knew how to get in. And welcome, Laura. Okay. So again, when we have our meetings, they're usually at 3.30. And I'm just going to go to the bottom real quick of the meeting agenda. You can see that all the meetings for the year are listed here. And we do have one meeting that will be on a Tuesday night. And that's because of, um, I believe there's a staff training on February 20th on that Monday. So I didn't want to have any confusion um, for staff, let staff go home that night for anyone who's in site council and just have it the next day. Um, sometimes um, things do come up for me and I do ask that we meet on a Tuesday, but um, that's the only day so far this year that I'm aware of. So uh, a site council is, is much like the Board of Education in that we can take comments from the public and um, it's kind of new with schools having virtual meetings um, for members of the community to come in and, and give their, their comments like at the board meeting. Um, we don't really send out our links to anyone out there who doesn't get emails from the the school, but um, people could come in uh, as members of the community and, and give some some comments. Um, so that is a time. We don't have a time limit uh, like the board, but usually it's just a few minutes. And I've never had an issue with, with anyone in the past. So I did want to discuss uh, some of the things that we have here for information for people. For anyone that's interested, um, there is a link here for a document from the state of California that kind of goes over the rules for site councils and how they're run. I know this was a document we used last year to guide us when we created our bylaws. And this is a link to our bylaws. So for people that are kind of new to Google Docs, um, it's really neat whenever you put in a PDF that you have within your Google Drive, you can share links out. So this is a link that is, so these are the bylaws that we created last year with the site council team and it has all the information. So if you are a new parent and you are wishing to be a part of the site council, when we have our elections next week, um, look through this document. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And the site council's main job is to create what's called a SIPSA, and that stands for Single Plan for Student Achievement. And we have three main goals. Uh, one is for uh, so kind of the culture or uh, college and career readiness of our campus. And then the second goal is a social emotional awareness goal or social emotional learning goal, SEL. You may have heard that acronym before. And the last goal is really focused in on academics with math and reading slash writing. 
So I just wanted to kind of go over so far where we are in this fresh new year with our goals. Um, for goal one, uh, we've introduced the leadership opportunities to fifth graders. Uh, at least two fifth grade teachers have gotten me back uh, a list of the kids that are interested in the various roles that they can take part of in the school. And that's being a blue jacket. And that's at lunch recess or, or morning or afternoon recess where the kids literally wear a blue jacket and they're a playground captain, and they help out with uh, leading the little kids, understanding the rules of games, and helping pick up, um, helping kids uh, wipe their hands, giving them wipes if, if they need to clean their hands uh, with safety surrounding uh, food allergies. Um, and also something we're introducing this year is our garden rangers, and we haven't started that yet, but we do have the aprons created, Thank you, um, Field of Dreams, for that. And they look really nice. And I did purchase uh, most of the materials, not all, but just a few things that we need in order to have a cafeteria sustainability program where kids uh, don't throw away their trays. Um, we set aside any kind of milk waste or water waste. Um, doesn't go into the garbage cans. And just trying to keep the, the landfill um, as empty as possible. Uh, we bought some really large um, compost bins that are kind of turny, and those are going to go out on the side of the building over by the bike racks, and for kids to, you know, bring the food scraps. I know I live in Monterey, and they're starting to tell us to put food scraps in our green bin for Monterey County, so that's something that we're going to try to do to create compost here, um, and to work with a group called Blue Zones in our area to create you know, food in our garden that kids can eat, to create that cafeteria sustainability program so we can say as a school that we're not sending too much over to uh, Marina and our, um, our dump. So we've introduced those things to kids. We're still kind of getting those things uh, completely organized. Uh, we do have three CSUMB mentors from their computer science program that will be working with our kids in our Lego club and our robotics club. And Mr. Uh, Via Gomez is going to be the uh, official coach for our first robotics team, Lego Robotics, uh, here. We do have a parent who has uh, agreed with Miss um, Pehan to run a STEM club at the after school enrichment or ASE program that is going to start up um, sometime this school year. Um, robotics is completely free. The ASE is a fee-based program. So um, once that ASC catalog goes out just for parents that are new, we haven't had ASC for a couple of years or uh, again, after school enrichment, that is a fee-based program. And again, if you're interested in hosting something like that, you can do that as a parent as well. You don't need a teaching credential. Um, you just need to get cleared by the district to host whatever it is you'd like to teach. So it's, it's something to stay connected with the kids if that's something that you're interested in. Um, I, I still keep telling people that I'm not the best video editor out there. Um, if anyone is able to help me uh, monthly with a video online magazine for Robert Down, I would love to work with you and get uh, the kids more leadership roles by you know, teaching them how to be uh, an anchor for the news, reading clearly, trying not to say the word like or um, or you know, every other word and giving them some presentation skills. So again, if you have editing skills, I'd love to work with you. Please reach out to me and we can have a great newsletter, video newsletter, that can go out every month. Mr. Sean, who is our drama director, uh, told me that he is working with 25 returning thespians uh, this year. He's gonna start off with those kids so they can then become mentors throughout the year for some younger students. So he's starting off with them. He told me he wants to have a bunch of smaller productions and He's, he's looking forward to another great year. I think the production they had last spring was a lot of fun and I'm hoping that it will continue. So 
look for more drama production opportunities for kids. And again, that is completely free. We don't expect any fee for our drama program. I created a guest speaker industry sector docu document for our teachers just this week, and I introduced it to leadership earlier today. That is going to collect all of the guest speakers, whether they come into the classroom physically, virtually, or if it's a field trip where they're getting a presentation in a certain industry sector. I want to collect all of these people, and my evil plan is to have uh, um, career day for our students at some point. Um, Ms. Sonda Pruden has had a career day in the past for our fifth graders, but I'd like to try to have something in the spring for our school, um, you know, at some point in, uh, if it's not this year, some point along the line where um, multiple grade levels can have access to speakers and just ask them questions, do a brief, brief, uh, presentation and then have kids ask questions about what that job is all about or jobs that people might have. I know I've had a few jobs in my career as an educator. So I do want to uh, bring your attention to world of work. This is something that we've looked at um, in the past. I purchased at least one kit for Ms. Kelly at the kindergarten level for world of work. And in our SIPs goals, <clears throat> excuse me. It is one of our goals to look at some career uh, exposure curriculum. So check this one out, give us your feedback. They have a few things you can download. If you have time, that would be great. If not, it's something that we can look at throughout the year as a site council as we move forward. And Again, a goal of mine is to have a student council slash advisory uh, made up of fourth and fifth graders, and that is to be created as well. So just want to give you an update of all the little sub goals for goal one. For our social emotional goal two, we've uh, on the next staff meeting, which we will have on September 12th, we will reintroduce many of the toolbox SEL lessons and goals to our staff. And I do have new staff that will be participating in the toolbox professional development that they offer. So we are moving forward with toolbox. And none of our lunchtime clubs have happened just yet, but we will have some yoga club with Ms. Tobin. And I believe we may have literature club for Ms. Heiserman. I know she showed some interest in doing that. And I'd have to double check on the adjunct list to see which other clubs are going to happen. But again, like I said, hope that advisory group will be happening soon. Our cop being good cards are being distributed. The kids are always happy to bring those up. Something that will be created, something I thought of over the summer was a good sport card. Kind of goes along with top being good, but I wanted to specifically focus in on play because that was where most of the conflicts were occurring on campus last year. And I wanted to provide an incentive to kids to be a good sport when they play with each other on the playground. So that's something we're going to try out this year, see if we have less conflicts on the playground. We will have the California Healthy Kids for fifth graders and site council surveys. Those will be conducted for sure uh, in November, either from November 14th through the 23rd. So that's the window that we're giving for staff to give it to the students and for staff to take it and for parents to take the, uh, the surveys this year that the site council will have. We're going to have a celebration of dance. If you been at Robert Down for a while. This used to be called the Spring Dance, but after our 100th year celebration for the building last year, I had a really, really long talk with Miss um, Heiserman, and she really wanted to bring it back towards the beginning of May. And this year, April 20th, 28th is the closest to May Day, which is when they used to have the annual um, Maypole dance. 
So we're going to have it this year on April 28th. And I've spoken with Mrs. Tobin, Mr. D, and the dance teacher over at the high school, uh, Tatum May. And she's going to work with the Breaker Girls at the high school. And they're going to come and mentor kids and teach a bunch of different uh, collection of dances from throughout the world. And that's kind of what the focus was a while back. We want to bring that back to Robert Down. And so we're going to have that celebration on April 28th. It will be outside and all families will be invited. It is to be determined when and how we're going to have diversity family nights, but I'm hoping that will be something that's coordinated with staff, this group, the site council, and our PTA. So I'm really hoping that that will be, uh, if we have multiple nights, one in the fall and one in the spring, um, but I'm hoping that's something that we can get going and, and have for this year. Tomorrow night, we're actually having the Toolbox Parent Night hosted by Sonda Pruden, and that will be a virtual presentation. And I will be sending out uh, another link. There was some information sent out during the principal update last week, but I wanna provide the link and the information to parents with just its own email. Thank you, Laura Otmar, I know you're here. Uh, she helped create some posters over the summers, over the summer, and they're up on the walls right now currently thanks to uh, her time. So thank you, Laura, so much for coming and putting those up. And uh, thank you also to Valerie, who's here. Uh, she started a hello wall and um, Jacqueline Perkins helped out with some, some lettering there. We still have some uh, work to do to create those completely, but it's a great start and thank you so much. And Art in Action will be purchased soon. Last week at our management meeting, we have received some one-time funding from the district and they're going to fund it for this year. So along with the Pebble Beach grant that I wrote, the money from the barbecue and the money from the district, we'll be able to purchase that and get that going in classrooms. Lastly, our third goal in our SIPSA is for language arts and math. And uh, next week we'll look at the results for SBAC and our fall math results. Uh, the measurement of academic progress. And we, we've done a great job. The, the tests that were conducted in the spring showed some great results and the, the new results that we have um, from that for this fall are also showing some really good results. And they're really helping us identify students that are struggling uh, so we can get them into the interventions that they need, uh, whether it be within the classroom or with support from outside the classroom. And we are uh, trying to revamp our student support team, or they used to be called students study teams or SSTs. Um, we're trying to revamp that process for our elementary schools. And there is a parent information sheet and some FAQs or frequently asked questions. There's a document through our website under the parent tab, and that's a link to it right there. And we wanted to make sure parents understood the whole process of SSTs, why we have them. And as a district, we are looking into revamping the paperwork that we go through and the resources that we use in trying to help students within the classroom, what we call at a tier one level to help them. And you know, if they have any kind of concerns, whether it be behavior or academic. Okay, and as I mentioned before with the surveys, um, we, I'm hoping that we will have some volunteers that will be on site council for this year that will help create those surveys. And we'll, I'll work with those individuals, whoever they might be. I just needed some help so we can make sure that those surveys go out in November. And then for those people who are new to site council, We'll have our elections next week, and which was the time of year we did this last year. And tonight, again, is, is an information night uh, to help explain what the chair people do, the vice chair people, the secretary, and the parliamentarian. So we don't have any action items for tonight, um, but I do want to answer any questions and also add 
into our future ad agenda items for people that are here tonight. So are there any questions or are there any items for this site council to focus on throughout the year that you'd like to add? Um, I have a comment and a question. I just wanted to respond to the kids out there in the blue jacket, seeing them at recess time. There are some really sweet stuff going on out there with the blue jackets helping the littles. And um, it's it's nice to see those kids back there on the playground because it's been a couple of years that they have been missing from the playground. So it's nice to see them out there. Um, and also on the um, celebration dance, are we looking to have each grade do a dance and like a dip from different cultures or from different parts of the world and, and the dance teams coming in to teach each grade that or it's yeah. gonna because in the past it hasn't really been like a diverse dancing it's just right. been dancing so it's nice to see that um back when I went to Forest Grove it was like that back in the 70s with the Mayflower dance and uh, so it's nice to hear that that kind of some of that diversity is coming back the way it used yeah, to be. That's the goal. I, I remember my first year here, a different Miss Dekuyan, uh, Juliana Dekuyan, who is Filipino. She she brought I forget the name of the dance, but she brought in a really cool dance that had some bamboo sticks. I don't know if you remember. I do remember and, that and, the and them dancing between the yeah, sticks. And that yeah, that was really cool. And that that's kind of what sparked. Um, me to when I was talking to Mary about changing the date and uh, bringing in. I didn't know that Forest Grove had this because when I was a parent at Forest Grove, they, they did not have any kind of uh, dance celebration at the end of the year. So oh, wow. that's great to hear that they've done yeah. it. I did the Mayflower and, dance myself in yeah. fifth grade. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in talking to Tatum May, um, who's an outstanding choreographer, uh, it's an opportunity also to give leadership to her dancers at the high school mm -hmm. and to help them understand that side of choreography if they've never done it before. I'm sure they choreograph you know, things for themselves, but this is an opportunity for them to work with a large group. And I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite shows is So You Think You Can Dance. And I just get chills when I watch it. I can't dance that way. And it just, it amazes me what people are able to do with their bodies and just the gracefulness and the beauty that's brought out in dance. And that's what I want to just kind of start with, with our students and, and have them understand that dancing is a, a wonderful thing. And I, I, I hope it will get some people moving and grooving. So I had a question uh, on the dance topic, actually, um, or an idea, I guess, um, about maybe having like, if I don't know if anyone's willing, um, but to have maybe like a dance club at lunch. I know there's a yoga, talking about yoga club, but a dance club would be something that would be kind of cool, you know, if someone's willing to do that and has the um, time and the talent and the willingness to do it. Um, it's, you know, that's something that's really fun. It's energetic and kids really bond over dancing. It's a great time. So that's, that's a great idea. House. We actually have a dance teacher on staff. I don't know if I can talk her into it, but who knows? I'll ask her. I don't want to reveal her name. I don't want to set her up if she turns me down. <laughs> but somebody else might want to do it. And I'll tell you, Laura, you know, I hope you know me by now. I'm willing to try anything. And I've been trying for years to get the high school to understand they can send down kids to us to be mentors. So if there's any kid who doesn't have a sixth or seventh period and they just have all this time on their hands and they're just, you know, I'm sure they have a lot of homework because our high school is hard to go to. But if they do have time and they want to give back, and they want that, you know, whether they have earned their community service hours or not, they can get college credit through MTC. And I would love to see those kids come down here and have them lead a dance club because we've got a lot of space outside. 
And if we had a dance club held outside with a music box and all it takes is that, some Wi Fi or uh, Bluetooth and some motivation, and, and there you have a dance club. And those kids could just show kids some great thing. I mean, it could be amazing. So that's a great idea. Are there any questions in general about site council and what we do? Okay. Hi everyone. I don't Hi, have Alex. a question. Um, I just wanted to say good evening and we are heading out. So I will submit my resignation um, as site council chair um, probably tonight, if not tomorrow. So I'm really glad to see that our inaction will be taking place. It will be some diversity nights. Those are really important things um, for the area um, in this community particularly. So I'm really um, happy to see that and I hope those things continue. So everyone take care. Thank you, Valerie. You're a wonderful chairperson. Thank you, Valerie, for your time that you've helped with the school. I appreciate it. And it was nice meeting you. Thanks, Valerie. Thank you. Bye, Val. So are there any future agenda items anyone would like to add? Um, actually, when um, we were talking about the compost and recycling of the um, trays, um, it made me think of um, when my kids were little, um, we attended um, Toro Park School and um, Spreckles School, and my daughter as a brownie or, you know, uh, daisy or whatever, um, they did a big thing on like recycling and um and they had field trips to, you know, like the dump to see how the process worked to really get an idea of like how much garbage is there. And it would just the same way as like second grade does like the whale watching trip. It would almost seem like if a grade could take on that kind of field trip to take the kids there to have an understanding of how that impacts our town. And, and that's something we saw in Spreckles, but then at Toro Park, um, they did a collection of um, bottle caps, like to Coke bottles, anything like a twisty, you know, bottle of different colors. And they're um, on a wall at their school. They built a mural of the ocean and dolphins and sea creatures out of the different colors of these lids to bottles. And, um, you know, Earth Day is on April 22nd. And it seems like maybe not this April, but you know, during this time, it, it takes a while to collect a nice assortment of lids, but it would seem like it would be just a nice way to, to pull it all together to kind of get these kids understanding the impact on that because, um, you know, just on waste and how that impacts earth and what they can do or how they can use materials to create something else. And so, um, it, I don't know, it was just other ideas to kind of how can we tie in Earth Day and recycling and the composting and a, a bigger understanding of that. Toro Park had an Earth Day concert where they worked with their music teachers and each grade, um, well, actually, I think it was only two grades that came together, but they sang um, songs that had to do with Earth, you know, and coming together. And it was an Earth Day concert and it was just during the middle of the school day and we heard, you know, maybe five songs, but the parents came and the kids tie dyed shirts and that looked like earth and blues and yellows or greens. And it was just a really cool event. And we loved going to that Earth Day concert, you know, assembly kind of um, when my kids were in second and third grade at Toro Park. So um, just some ideas to throw out there. Those are great ideas. I had uh, something that I wanted to add, and uh, I had talked to you, Mr. Keller, about this um, when I was at the school one day, and it was just a thought about, you know, um, I was thinking about the doing dishes, and you know, you think when you do dishes. So, 
Um, the thought of the Pledge of Allegiance and um, how I think it's, I think every class does it in the morning. I mean, I, I only have experience with the lower grades, but um, just thinking about the kids making a pledge when it comes to like a social emotional learning or comes to kind of the bullying issues that we've had on campus, but making a pledge um, of, you know, I pledge to be kind to myself and to others today, um, kind of like an affirmation pledge. I pledge to be a friend to someone in need, something like that. So it's sort of this verbalization of um, a commitment to just be kind and be responsible and be respectful and be safe. So I don't know how that would go every morning, but it, it might be something that's nice to do that it's sort of like this, just like a verbal acknowledgement. And you know what, I will, we will be on the 12th going over what Toolbox already has. So with you sharing that, and thank you, by the way, um, I looked into the Toolbox curriculum and it's it seems fairly new. They have some chance. Um, you know, they call it chance, but it's it's kind of like a pledge or affirmation where they talk about the different tools and reading the lyrics and everything. I, I think it could be adjusted for Robert Down for sure. And it's I think it was something that we definitely can do. So I wanted to share with the staff, see what they think, show them the videos, and. I know people are doing something like that already, but it just reaffirms how if you get it into something like that in a rhythm, the kids will remember it. So just so you know, the state basically requires schools to do some kind of patriotic act. So schools don't necessarily have to do the pledge, just so you know, they don't have to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Most schools do because it's somewhat easy and you have the flag and what have you. If you've ever seen first grade and second grade, they they do the pledge, right? Then they have a song. So it's a it's that patriotic act. Some schools actually take care of the patriotic act by having students help put up the flag and take it down every day. But I know I know you're not talking about that. I think it's a great idea, but I wanted you to know that Toolbox basically has it already, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just maybe need to tweak it just a little bit. But I'll, I'll share them with you. Any other items to discuss? Okay, so once again, here's the dates for this year's site council meetings. And unlike tonight, and again, my apologies for not being able to uh, have things together. I, I had some other things I had to do last week. And to be honest, I was kind of on Hawaii times again. Poor me, but uh, I did have some other things I had to do. Um, but we have that one Tuesday in February. Other than that, these are our dates that we will meet. And I look forward to meeting uh, new members. Again, I will put out um, an invitation. If you're watching this video, please, we want your help. Uh, we need your help. We definitely want to have a great plan to create, to go over and make sure this plan is enacted. And we want an excellent plan for 2023. 2024. So come be a part of Robert Down Elementary's site council, and we'll see you September 19th at 3.30 if you can make it. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.